Do guards really bring drugs in prison? Let's go. K Rugs, the Sober Dog, coming at you. Check out Sober Dog shirts. Recovery threw me a bone on the back. Yeah, they got a lot of different sayings. Got a link in the description if you want to check it out. Remember, Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. Please seek professional medical help if you have an addiction. Common question I've gotten asked by a lot of people, because I, I did a video a while back on five of the most common ways drugs get in prison, and I wrote a couple articles on it. And there was a, a magazine and a newspaper in New York City who contacted me to be like a, quote, expert source uh, in their article because they were doing an a, a, a expose or whatever on how so much heroin and fentanyl was getting in to the, I want to say Suffolk County prison. There's another one on Long Island. I'm blanking on the name. Anyway, they were talking about that. So they found my article and contacted me about that. One of the most common questions people ask in regard to that is, and I don't know if they're naive or don't, I, I think a lot of it, because I have a couple family members who say this too, they don't want to believe it. The, what I'm about to say, the question, is something that they don't, people have this general trust of government and authority because it's a safety net and it's almost ignorance is bliss. Like, yes, the government is looking out for the citizens. The, the problem is a lot of people don't want to dig in on the harder stuff that there is bad apples and everything because then it erodes their faith and their trust in like this overall, like things are going to work out because government's got our back or the system is, is working for the people. Not always and not that common. The question is, do guards really bring drugs in prison? That was the question I've gotten. And they always ask that. And it's always like this, really? Like, that's not just something to hype up videos or the article. And I'm like, no, not at all. Again, with that being said, by no means am I saying five out of 10 guards are bringing drugs in prison. Not at all. I think 95% of prison guards are there to do a job and they want to go home. Some are genuinely great people and try to help. Some are just sheep who follow and they can either follow good or bad, depending on what's happening during their shift. And there's a percent that aren't doing anything good and they're not doing the right thing. That percent, sure, there is definitely some of them bringing stuff in. And here's the other thing, it doesn't need to be a large amount. Let's take, for example, Collins, one of the prisons I, was, I did most of my time at. Collins was not a big facility by any means necessarily. It had Collins side A, when I was there, had about 350 inmates. Side B had about 550. And the box, the shoe, had 100 double bunk cells that was usually like 90% filled. So let's just say 180 inmates for sake of argument. So you're talking about 1,000 total. How many guards were, were there employed? If I had to take a wild guess, maybe 110, 120, maybe could be 50 more than that, could be 30 less. But let's say for the sake of argument, you know, 120. If even five guards are bringing stuff in, they could like flood the facility pretty good. I mean, it, you know, an ounce of weed in prison, like an ounce of weed on that side one where I was with 350 guys, they roll these tiny little pinhead joints where basically you can roll like four or five joints out of a dime bag of weed in prison. So do the math to that. An ounce on that side can flood a lot of that area. So if there's a guard with a system bringing it in, bringing in a half ounce of heroin or 50 Suboxone strips or an ounce of weed or an ounce of K2, that, you know, times five guards. And that, you know, who's to say it's five? It could be 14 or it could be two. Can be a lot in that small area. So it doesn't take much. The other thing with it is people would say, why would they possibly do it? Why would a guard risk their job, their freedom? You know, they get in trouble, they're going to get charged. You know, what's their reward? What's their motivation? A couple factors, but number one, most common, most important, money. Money speaks. 
that ounce of weed that probably costs $250 on the street in there wholesale will sell for at least, you know, 1500, 1200, 1500 if you just sold the whole thing as is. Some spots certain times you can get 2000 easy for it. Broken down, if somebody were to take that whole ounce and roll a bunch of little pinhead joints out of it, they could roll I don't even know how many pinhead joints. Like I said, out of a dime, they'll roll four or five, sometimes even six plus, and sell each of those for 10 bucks. So if a guard and an inmate work that out, and that's just weed, you know, it's not even talking about the harder stuff. If a guard and an inmate work that out, the guard pays 250, brings it in, the inmate gives him a grand, the guard just four times his money right there. 250, now he's got a G. The inmate takes that and is easily, you know, even if he's terrible at what he does, is probably gonna at least double. If he's good at what he does, can triple if not more. So each person is making four to 10 times their initial investment. That is why they do it. You know, a guard who makes 50 grand a year, who knows, I could do one thing one time and make a grand in cash, or I could do it once a week and double my salary, make a hundred grand, 50 illegally, 50 illegally. That's very incentivizing, especially if they have their own issues, marriage problems, divorce, alimony, money, child support, alcoholism, who knows? You know, there's a huge rate of alcoholism, mental health problems, suicide with prison guards because, you know, they say for the eight hours they're there, they're basically doing time themselves. It's a dark, dingy, violent, shitty atmosphere. The other way guards are incentivized to do this is through blackmail. Inmates will blackmail guards for sure. They will find ways to do it. They figure out, they find these people on the street, they'll call the girl, give the guard's name, have the girl do background checks and Facebook and, and follow them on here and there and see what they're into and see if they could find something to exploit. You know, the guards got a huge drinking problem and they drive drunk consistently. Also, inmates build relationships with guards. There's an inmate who lives in a unit with a guard for six years straight. They get to know each other, they talk. You know, on year four, the inmate starts planting seeds of man, you know, if you'd help me out with this, it'd help you, it'd help you, it'd help me, it'd help you. And they just, the, the thing is they have time on their side, the inmate does. So the first time they bring it up in a real nonchalant way, the guard might be like, you are out of your fucking mind or just gloss it over as a joke. Then every day for the next 200 days, they just put a little seed when the guard's on and dig it a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Some give in and some don't. That's the same thing with, with inmate guard relationships. Typically, at least in my, you know, I, I didn't have any. I knew some guys where I was that did. It wasn't like they were with a female guard the first time, you know, she was on her shift and they just psh, went at it. No, it was like months and years of like, push a comment out there, see how she responds. Push the next comment a little bit further. Wait a week, push this issue, push that boundary. Push, 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 push. Next thing you know, 400 days later, what started with a little comment, you know, I like your hair today. You know, uh, if I met you on the street, I think we'd be friends. Pushed into a way bigger comment. What's up? Why don't mean you go in the back? And now you built a relationship and trust to where you think she's not going to get you in trouble. And it goes to one thing. So all these are where the time is on inmate side and they push and push and push. And yes, guards do bring stuff in. I would not say 20% or even 10%. I would say 5% or less, 5% or less can make a prison flooded with drugs.